All right, so those are the big concepts, right? How do these molecules move? This next bit is a bit like a tour, right? We're gonna go, we're gonna look at the different sections of the nephron and see how these processes um, play out differently in the different uh, parts, because they do. The different parts of the nephron are, while they have a lot of similarities, they do different things. Okay, so first off, proximal convoluted tubule, right? Um, where we have, here's our glomerulus capsule. This is the first part of the capsule. Generally speaking, right, we are going to have, um, so this is the filtrate in here. We're gonna have secretion of hydrogen ion, organic acid, and bases. We're gonna have reabsorption of all those things, right? Sodium chloride, bicarb, potassium, glucose, amino acids. All right, so some specific characteristics of this area. Lots of membrane expansion. Remember, this is the, in the kidney, it's all happening at the surfaces of the cells, right? So we need more surface to have more transporters. How do we get more surface without making the cell bigger? We make wrinkles, right? Folds. So that's what we have here. We have uh, folds, microvilli, um, in the uh, luminal at the luminal side of these. Okay, so that's adaptation number one. Adaptation number two, huge amounts of mitochondria in these cells. When we look at them under the microscope, and that's because they have to power the sodium potassium pumps that power everything else, okay? So the kidney is literally burning up oxygen and using glucose to move sodium for reabsorption. It is an active process, which means, you know, you guys like clinical connections, it means that if you have a kidney that is hypoxic or ischemic, it cannot do reabsorption. So one of the ways your kidneys can fail, you have basically two ways kidneys can fail. They stop making urine, or they make lots and lots of really dilute urine, right? Those are the two ways. So a hypoxic ischemic assault, you get the latter. You get a kidney that can't reabsorb anymore, right? And essentially all the plasma volume is going through the bladder and out of the patient. So lots of mitochondria powering these processes, um, the large number of sodium potassium pumps. We also have our SGLT and our glute transporters, as well as our amino acid co-transporters, right? Like we saw in that picture earlier. Okay, so you can kind of divide the two of uh, the proximal convoluted tubule into two halves. The first half, sodium glucose amino acids, right? and water, I would add water to that list, okay? Or that's primarily what's being reabsorbed there. In the second half, by the, in the healthy human being, by the time you get to the second half of the proximal convoluted tubule, most of the glucose and amino acids are gone, right? Um, <clears throat> so we see a lot of chloride reabsorption instead in the second half. So like if I were to ask you, which part of the proximal convoluted tubule um, would have the, the largest energy expenditure, right? It's gonna be the first half because of all of the uh, sodium uh, potassium transporters and what they're powering. The other thing I want you to know about the PCT is this is all obligate. This is on all the time. So this does not change in response to your body's needs. It doesn't need to, okay? this. Essentially, if we don't have this system working, we're dying. So this has to be on all the time, and it is. So there isn't a regulatory uh, component to the proximal convoluted tubules um, reabsorption. Okay, so as we go across, okay, um, I've been, not been good about my axes. Okay, X is as we go across the proximal tubular, tubulo, tubulo, proximal convoluted tubule, right? So from the beginning to the end. And then here is the ratio of the solute in question. So it's the ratio of, of solute in the fluid to solute in the plasma. All right, so I wanna show you the sodium line first. Okay, so as we go across the proximal convoluted tubule, you can see that the sodium uh, concentration or the, or the ratio of fluid the ratio of filtrate to plasma doesn't change. But I just told you that a huge amount of sodium is being reabsorbed, right? 
Why? How can that be? Because sodium and water are being reabsorbed at about the same pace. So the relative difference isn't changing. So why are you poking up there? <laughs> Pop up. Oh, wait, come back here. Nope, wrong way. That way. OK. So as we go across here, yeah, huge amounts of water and salt are being reabsorbed. But because they're being reabsorbed in about an, os an isotonic way, it's flat. Different than glucose, right? As we go from the beginning to the end, we see the glucose concentration or ratio between uh, filtrate and plasma dropping. That's what we want to see. That's reabsorption, right? Amino acids dropping, bicarbonate dropping. Creatinine increasing. Why? Because we're taking water away, right? So we're concentrating the urine while we're removing the things that we want to keep out of it, OK? Um, <clears throat> so uh, how things change as we go across the proximal convoluted tubule. Remember, everything in the body is a process. Nothing happens instantly. So it takes time to reabsorb that glucose. Now, by the time you hit the end of it, you've got almost all of it, right? By the time you get to the end of the nephron, you will have all of it. All right. So that's reabsorption, right? Powered by the sodium and potassium pumps and um, uh, diffusion gradients. The PCT does have some secretion. Okay, remember what secretion is. Secretion is taking something from the filtrate and, nope, sorry. Filtration is taking something from the blood and putting it into the filtrate, right? Pushing it out of the body, essentially. So in addition to filtration in the PCT, we also get secretion of bile salts, oxalate, urate, catecholamines, many medications, including penicillin and salicylate. Salicylates are aspirins. You know, aspirin is a salicylate. Um, and then we have this weird one, PAH, paraaminohyperic acid, is a specialized compound that we actually use to measure kidney function. Okay, and I'm going to show you how that works at the end of this talk. Um, so, yes, it's fully secreted in the PCT, um, but we'll talk more about why that matters. So there's not a lot of active secretion in the PCT, but there is.